Hello Minions, Wheezy again with another Nerdtacular HDCP video for you. Uh, this one um, is going to extend on the other two that I did. Um, one for the PS4 Pro, one for the Xbox One X. So those go into a little bit more detail on what HDCP is and why. This video are, uh, is going to focus on um, my setup of how to take your consoles and put them through a switch so that you can display them uh, use them through a switch and also through a splitter so you can display them on multiple displays and uh, how you are going to be able to do that without HDCP getting in your way and causing you a bunch of headaches. So um, I'm going to show you everything you need, everything you need to know, and I'm going to walk you through every step. So let's go. All right, so like I said, if you want more information about what is HDCP, why should you care, what are some reasons you might want to go through it, check out the compatible video, PS4 Pro or Xbox One X. Um, I'll have them linked just so that'll give you more clarification on that. Assuming that you already understand all that and you want this, this is running through that setup, I'm gonna show you how I have my setup so that I am able to manage all my consoles on multiple displays without any headache. So um, right here you can see that I've got my Xbox One X and my PS4 Pro hooked on my display at 4K60, also running through my AverMedia Live Gamer Portable 2 Plus with 4K pass-through, so it's capturing in 1080p, it is uh, displaying in 4K, and if we go out to my living room here, my dogs are barking, you can see that it is also displaying on my screen. And for those of you who wonder, there is a wall in the way here. My consoles all are, are over there, and I'll even show you. Let me switch, got my little remote here. Boop, switch over to the Xbox. The PlayStation and the Xbox both work, and I use Forza to test this because racing games are notoriously uh, sensitive to input lag. But you can absolutely, through a wall, easily with no input delay, use this. So I was really happy to find that out so I can sit out here and play games uh, with my video game consoles through two walls in the other room. Um, but I'm gonna show you how that works and how it's set up. So uh, let's switch back to the PS4. Now what I'm going to briefly show you just because the PS4 makes it the easiest to do that. Obviously they're both running through the same set of equipment so it's the same on both. But if we look at the PS4 Pro, we can see under system, and I nailed that, that HDCP is enabled, which means that the signal being displayed here, as well as on my DIN TV, as well as on my capture in OBS, is all with HDCP there, so we don't have that headache to deal with. So what is my setup? Like I said, if you guys have seen the PS4 Pro and Xbox One X videos about HDCP, you will recognize this setup. It is exactly the same with one exception. The input here, is now no longer the input from either the PS4 Pro or the Xbox One X. The input here is the output from my HDCP 2.2 compatible switch. Okay, so here, there's also a button on here so I can switch it to input two, which is the Xbox. Flippity flip. All right, and I'll click it again. Back to PlayStation 4 Pro. So we have our HDCP compatible devices hooked in here. Everything's working great. Um, so I'll talk briefly about why this extra component is needed. Um, but another interesting thing to note, one thing I haven't been able to get working is my Google Chromecast Ultra, which is how you play Google Stadia. For whatever reason, it does not like to go through anything else at all. It has to be plugged basically straight into the TV to do 4K60. If you want to downscale it to 1080p, you can get it to play nice in here. Um, but that's interesting to note if you're in here looking for maybe not the Xbox or PlayStation specifically, but maybe the Chromecast Ultra. Um, I have not figured that out other than using something that downscales. So maybe I'll do a separate video uh, on the downscaler for that. But anyway, why is this important? So before I bought this, I had, uh, as you can see, I've got a lot of, oh no, I moved it out there. <laughs> Forgot that I moved it to the other TV to plug in my old stuff. So got my old PS2, Xbox 360 out here. Uh, I have this 4K switch, um, but this is not HDCP 2.2 compliant. So it will push a 
4K 60 hertz signal through it, but not with HDCP, which is a problem. So uh, you have to make sure, and like I said, I will have links to what I use. This stuff's not super expensive. Um, and if you want to set up like I have, um, you will, if you get this stuff, you will know that it works. This is an HDCP 2.2 compatible switcher. And this is actually a five input switcher. Now, the reason you need the HDCP 2.2 compatibility is because it needs to do the handshake with the consoles and with the display so that the signal can get decrypted. If you don't have a compatible display and you put it through this system, you will get black screen. It will not work. Um, so, so here is that setup. Um, the Like I said, we've got the PlayStation 4 in input 1, the Xbox One in input 2, and then the output from this switch is plugged into the input of our HDCP 2.2 compatible splitter. The output from our HDCP splitter goes into our HDCP 2.2 to 1.4 converter. And the output of our 1.4 converter is a 1.4 signal. It's going into our HDMI splitter. This is an old, dumb HDMI splitter. And what it does is it removes the HDCP 1.4 and the output goes to my display in here, as well as my capture device. And this other output display goes through the wall to my TV out there. One thing interesting to note is I did pay for a fiber optic um, HDMI cable. This cable is actually 65 feet long. I only needed about 25 feet, but I was using a normal 25 foot HDMI cable and the screen out there would flicker and I did some research and it turns out basically HDMI 2.0, a 4K 60 hertz signal on a cord over 15 feet is not going to be a good day for you unless it's a high quality cable. So I think I paid like 60 bucks, uh, 40 or 60 bucks, something like that. I'll have a link for this as well. Um, for an optical HDMI cable that is 65 feet long. Uh, like I said, they had a shorter one that was cheaper, but I figured if I'm already paying for a nice cable, uh, I might as well get the longer one <laughs> that I know will work in case for whatever reason in the future, I have to do a longer run than I have right now. So right now, most of the extra cord is just sitting in the crawl space in here uh, before it feeds through the wall. So that is the setup. I will have uh, the details of this um, posted to uh, wheezygaming.com. I'll have a link to that post as well so that you guys can get a breakdown of this in case uh, rewatching a video is not the best thing in the world for getting this set up. But um, if you're like me and you want to be able to easily manage all of your systems and not have to hassle with it, let's say I'm sitting in here and I want to play a game like, or like I've been doing with my story time, I've been playing the single player modes. So let's say I want to go sit down on the couch and be comfortable, but still be able to capture the gameplay, like if I'm playing Jedi Fallen Order, although um, you know that I record commentaries when I do that. But if I want to do that, then I can fire it up. It'll capture. I can capture it in here. And then I can go out here if I want to sit on the couch and play the game on my big screen. So hopefully, uh, hopefully that's uh, informative and uh, helps you guys figure out how to get this set up for yourself. Okay, minions, hopefully that was helpful for you. Hopefully that was informative. If you got something useful out of that, like this video, share it with people who need this information. Um, if you want more videos like this, subscribe. I do a lot more gameplay than hardware stuff. Those of you who've been around, you know that. Um, but anything that's nerdy and worth doing related to video games or technology, you're probably gonna see something from me here. Uh, I will follow up. Uh, I have my Xbox Series X coming tomorrow. I haven't snagged a PS4 or a PS5 yet. I didn't get the pre-orders. Those of you who've seen the channel know that I'm, I'm going to try and get one on launch day. We'll see. But eventually I will definitely have a PS5. So I will follow up with HDCP videos for the Xbox Series X, Xbox Series S, and the PS5. Um, so you can look forward to that. Subscribe if you need that. Um, but yeah, otherwise, I'm just going to leave it here. Hopefully that was helpful, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye!